Chickens aren't the only type of poultry that walk across these pastures. There's also turkey on the pastures and they're a very nice niche product that can help complement what is already a successful pastured poultry enterprise. In this video, we're gonna focus on what it's like to raise turkeys on pasture and why you might wanna consider doing it. Stay tuned to find out more about that coming up. When you think about raising turkeys, why turkeys for you? We wanted to give it a try. We had never, we never tried it before, but we thought that it would be a good uh, opportunity for profit and um, and the ability to get um, a different kind of bird, different kind of bird pressure, and and give give that a try in terms of its ecological benefits. But but mostly because we knew that it could be a, a good shot of profit there at the end of the year um, before we go into the winter season, where pretty much we're just selling frozen frozen stuff out of the out of the walk-in. Um, we've got this time where we can sell something um, fresh um, right right off the pasture and and just give us you know, a few thousand dollars there at the end of the year to, to, to go into winter and pay that last feed bill. And much like your pastured poultry, these are just open cell mm -hmm. and no issues doing that so far for them? So far, um, turkeys, um, they, they do have this propensity to die up to eight weeks, but once you get them kind of past that point, um, we had them in this little chicken tractor here, we open the door and they pretty much barely go back inside anymore. And, and uh, I, don't, I think they're about as big as the coyotes that live around here. So I, I think uh, we're, we're pretty safe. Um, at this point, um, from what I've been able to see so far. And for as many as you're doing, I think you're saying that about two thirds of them are sold so far. Mm -hmm. You see a pretty good, like once a year demand. Because one thing we've talked about on the podcast is, you know, even at $5 a pound, you have a 20 pound bird. Yeah. And it's a $100 meat purchase for somebody. Yeah. But around holidays, they can tend to do it. What's been your experience so far pre selling them? Um, so far, yeah, we've gotten a lot of interest at the farmers markets. Um, just kind of putting out a sign and making sure people know we have them. So we've we uh, we put out a ham and turkey sign. We're we're sold out of ham, and we've got um, you know, about 15 or 20 turkeys left to sell. And and uh, we're we're planning on on having them having them all sold. I don't think it'll be too tough for us with this size. For your ham, I know that's one thing that can be challenging to sell for some farmers. I know we're not talking pigs now, but. How have you made that work for you? Is it just, do you think it's your market? Um, well, I, th I think the turkeys maybe help us sell a little bit more ham, but uh, just because we kind of offer, we want to provide your holiday meats kind of option. Yeah. Um, but we don't sell too many hams, it, and we really only do them at Christmas time. Um, yeah. So it's it's a smaller market. We'll probably, you know, we'll sell these 45 turkeys. It's, it's our kind of starter flock, but we might not ever sell more than um, six, eight, 10 hams in a, in a given year. These are actually a broad-breasted white turkey, and we use these for a number of reasons. They're not a heritage breed. Uh, our customers really don't care. Um, the biggest reason, though, is we, we actually start these guys the last week of July. I want you to stop and think about that. The last week of July, these turkeys show up, and then we've got to manage them until the middle of November, towards the 20th of November, almost the end of that month. So you're talking about a three and a half, almost four month commitment with a quicker growing broad-breasted white. If we had a heritage bird out here, we would need to add at least three to four weeks to our management time. And we might end up with a smaller turkey and maybe we could charge a little bit more for it. Maybe we couldn't. I don't know that I think we could charge enough to offset the additional labor and the smaller bird. We make really good money with these and we get consistent feedback every year from our customers that our turkeys are the best tasting turkey they've ever had. And I know for a fact, a lot of them have bought a heritage breed turkey from local competitors. I think it all gets back to moving them every day, giving them the proper amount of stocking density so that they can graze. As you can see, I mean, they're still, th this is yesterday's paddock and they're still grazing bugs and grass from 24 hours ago. So the more of that that they, they eat, the better they taste. And I think that's the difference. I think that's, one thing, you know, a heritage breed turkey, I don't think it's really going to pay you necessarily to raise that. If that's your personal context and that's what you want to raise, by all means go for it. Just know it's going to take longer, it's probably going to end up smaller, and you're probably going to make less money on it. Something else you may find is that a butcher will charge you more to butcher that heritage breed turkey than they will one of these broad-breasted whites because of how much more difficult it is to get the feathers out. All things to take into consideration when you're planning your operation. What weight do these finish out at? 
Our average turkeys will typically finish out around 18 to 20 pounds. Last year, they were just a smidge over 19 pounds. This year, I know they're bigger than they were at this point last year, so we may actually hit about 20 pounds. We charge $5.49 a pound, so we're pushing 110, 115 bucks a turkey. That's, that's a pretty high number for, for one piece of meat for one meal. But generally spe speaking, people don't have an issue buying it. One thing that's really interesting about the turkeys, we get a lot of people who'll buy a turkey from us. We don't hear from them the rest of the year. They buy absolutely nothing else from us the whole rest of the year, but they'll buy a turkey and we have repeat customers that do that year after year. And we, we kind of swing for the fences on the turkey. That $5.49 a pound is pretty high. I've got competitors here locally that charge as low as $3.49 a pound, $2.00 less per pound so I make an extra 30 to 40 dollars per turkey over what they do just because we out market them we only do about 125 of these guys I, I don't have hundreds of them to market you need to figure out like if you want to charge less how many more turkeys you need to raise manage and sell to make the same amount of money my theory is to pick the low-hanging fruit a certain number of people are always going to be willing to pay more for a premium product if you're good at telling your story explaining why your product is superior to your competitors without cutting your competitors down, they'll pay the premium. You can make more money per bird, manage less animals. Turkeys are definitely a little bit more difficult than a brooder. I think you need to have pretty good brooder skills from chickens before you take on turkeys. If you're trying a small number, not so big of a deal, but if you're starting 120, 130, 150 of them, you better be sure that you got good management skills. Um, you got to be a little bit more cautious with these guys on pasture with their, their legs. Definitely don't want to run over them uh, because they are so much more fragile. These take a lot longer and really the, you know, the biggest difference is the marketing. You're not asking somebody to buy a $20 chicken, you're asking them to buy a $115 turkey. So my thought process is that you need to have a pretty solid customer base already established that knows you, trusts you, likes your products before you try to add turkeys on. I think, personally, I think turkeys are something you bolt on once you have a, a pastured chicken enterprise up and running successfully. This is something you can then stack on. People will certainly ask about it. I've had a lot of people say, well, we're gonna start with turkeys out of the gate because we can make so much more money on them. Well, maybe if you've got the customer base, we make more money on these, yes, but we only do them once a year. It's a very special thing. It's a very niche thing for us. So that's one of the reasons we're so successful with making $40, $50 a turkey, honestly. Um, and some of our bigger turkeys, we, we might clear 50, 60 bucks on one turkey. Like I said, we really swing for the fence, but we do less of them. But that's because of our brand image and our, our marketing and the fact that we've been around for a long time, people know us and, and like us and trust us that you know we're able to do that and really get that big premium. Right now, Darby's in the process of moving his pastured poultry pens down the field, but in this case, those poultry are turkeys. They're moving down the field that way. What he's able to do with his pens, the way they're designed, is use the same pens that he would use for his chickens, also for his turkeys. And he's moving them down the field this way. So this is the area they were at last. And turkeys are definitely different in terms of their behavior when it comes to forage. How are they different? This is how. One thing I really want to show within this pen is what's really interesting is how the turkeys handle the new forage. They're very different than how the chickens did. When we move the chicken tractors down the field, the chickens really don't care so much about the grass. They care about the grain in the feeder. So the chickens were mobbing the feeder. In this tractor, which I'll show in a second, you can actually see the turkeys are doing a lot of foraging around. They're not even touching the feeder at all. So this is a brand new patch of grass for them, a brand new patch of pasture. No feed, they're not going for it. They'll eventually go and pick at it, but they are definitely more obvious foragers than the chickens are. As you heard in this video, turkeys can make a great niche enterprise. They can make a great complementary enterprise for another species, be it cattle, be it chicken. One thing that also some people might have, depending upon market conditions, is they might be able to do turkey year round. The hard part about turkey is what Darby mentioned, the fact that you're trying to sell a $115 hunk of meat to somebody, that's a big purchase. Your average consumer isn't gonna wanna do that when it's already hard to sell a $25 chicken. But if you can, the profits are there. On a $115 purchase, Darby's probably making at least $40 in pure profit. 
from the turkeys. So if you're considering adding turkeys, the things you really got to think about is, do you have the land to do it? Do you have the market to do it? Can you sell them all? And if you can, it probably makes sense to add them. That's all for this one. Coming to you from a beautiful fall day here in Martinsville, Indiana. Thank you for watching this one. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.